Chapter 6 Networking. In this chapter, we're going to learn how to connect the computer to a network and the settings that we're going to use. So, we're going to start with network IP addresses. The TCP IP protocol is the standard protocol used uh, over the internet and in enterprises as well as at home. The network IP addresses are of this form 0.0.0.0. This is a class A IP address and it starts at 0.0.0.0 and it finishes at 126.255.255.255. Class B starts at 128 which uh, starts you see a little bit above 127 so we're gonna discuss the 127.0.0.1 IP address which is uh, reserved the class B starts at 128 finishes at 191 class C starts at 192 and it finishes at 223 class D and E are used for um, experimentation and they're not really in general use now we have class private IP addresses and these are within each class A, B and C. These are not routable on the internet so for example if you want to give your computer an IP address and have it hook up to the internet and believing that you will actually be able to host your website is not going to work. So we are going to focus mostly on the IP addresses and especially the class C address. It is widely used in home networking environments. As you can see also, if we clear the screen here, and when we do an IP config to find out which is our IP address, you're going to find out that this is our IP address right here and it's a class C IP address and most of the home environments start with this IP address and you can see the default gateway is 192.168.3.100 this is a general overview of IP addresses and we're gonna get to understand them more and more throughout this chapter setting up your network firstly everyone needs to save all of their usernames and passwords in a notebook if you don't create a notebook to store all the information this is definitely the most important moment to do so. All networks have passwords and your online accounts and uh, Verizon DSL has uh, its own set of passwords as you can see here so you should have a notebook for that. Setting up your network. As you can see here we have a general typical network setup where you have the modem that comes from your internet service provider and if it is a wireless modem it connects to your computer wirelessly or wired this is a typical setup then we have uh, as you can see also we're going to discuss the network key these network keys are used for you to authenticate this computer to this modem if you have a wireless uh, network card and a wireless modem you need most of the time you need a security key to authenticate with the modem this is not a measure that your internet service provider will enforce this is a measure of security for your neighbors to not hack into your network and also your computer okay network overviews most of the home networks are composed of two or three main items the modem a device which comes from your isp a router which could be separate physical device and at least one computer there's also a very very modest setup which is the modem and the computer we already saw that this is a wired setup the modem facilitates your connection to the internet so the modem is like the middleman then we have this setup where you have a modem, a router which is also wireless and your network devices. Anytime any of these devices in between your computer and the internet might freeze or fail, you don't have internet and most of the time a quick shutdown and restart of these devices would fix the problem. The image below represents the rear of a typical home router or a home switch. The WAN port received the Ethernet cable from the modem. This is the WAN port 
and this connects directly to your modem and that modem connects directly into the router assume that this would be the router and this is its rear all your other ethernet devices or network devices as network printers computers uh, home servers will connect into these ports by the ethernet cable and if you see the drawing here we have we have a fairly accurate image of the ethernet cable with the rj45 jack and the retainer sometimes these retainers break and uh, if the cable is fully or almost fully inserted into the port it will give you a visual cue that your network is fully plugged in and everything should work but for some reason it does work so one other step of troubleshooting is check your cables to make sure they're fully inserted and the retainers are there because if the retainer is not there the cable is going to slide out of the port tweaking your Verizon DSL network if you have an Xbox 360 you need to add a port forwarding to your Verizon DSL Westelbox or whatever you might have to do that you need to log into the Westelbox open CMD and type in ipconfig as we did earlier type in ipconfig because usually your DSL box is the default gateway so you have to connect to your default gateway through a web browser so without further ado we're gonna try to connect to our DSL box and it's already here 192.168.1.1 and it's usually the same IP address over all routers home routers and switches so we're gonna type in the password and I'm gonna pause the video here this is our Verizon box so here we are going to add some port forwarding rules to enable some services for example if you have an Xbox you might need to do this however this system already has the rule for an Xbox but I'm gonna show you how it's done for other services so I'm gonna click on network firewall or firewall settings I'm gonna go to port forwarding here we're gonna confirm by clicking yes and these are our forwarding rules that we already have in place as you can see we already have Xbox Live and uh, we're gonna add a few new rules and we have to click the add button right here and we're gonna select a service rule from the pre-populated ones and we're gonna say what do we have here you say age of empires the conquerors it's added it's selected for which device to be added if you have more than one computer that you played the same game from you have to make it a dynamic but if you only have one computer then it's recommended that you use only that host because the delay would be reduced the network delay so just select that we have age of empires to the conquerors now we're gonna add a custom rule so click add again and we're gonna create a new rule and we're gonna define the ports we're gonna name it RDP as in remote desktop protocol and we're gonna select the port 3389 and we're gonna select the port 3389 again and again the global port start and port end can be used in a sequence and um, this is the port where you can forward it to the actual machine you can change that if you want to to different other ports but that's a little bit complex so you should stick with the basics and this is the protocol which is TCP and uh, we're gonna apply the settings and close it now we're gonna click add again since we created the rule now we have to add it I'm gonna click add again and we're gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna find RDP right here and click apply and now we have RDP added to the user laptop and we're gonna create another rule so you can understand that um, some rules are also on uh, the UDP protocol not only TCP so I'm gonna say um, training 
UDP and we're gonna change the protocol to UDP or both if you want to we're gonna select both and we're gonna select the uh, port 5656 and uh, again 5656 unless you want to go on a sequence from 5656 to let's say 5700 and here you can select only one port and we're going to select 5700 apply the rule and now we have created the rule it's right here i'm going to close and we're going to select it from down here and we're going to apply it and the rule should be there there it is right there training udp so this is how you create rules for most of the services that you want to use and if you have a problem that your um, games or what have you are not working properly and you tried everything you might want to go and create a port forwarding rule within um, your modem or your router depending what you have sometimes you can talk to the isp or internet service provider on the phone and they can uh, tell you how to join your modem with your router port forwarding on a linksys router to forward ports on a linksys router you go to application and games right here and then and then we're going to force some ports for certain applications that we want as you can see we already have a few ports forwarded and this is the protocol of the application that you have to give it a name so we're going to say aoe which is age of empires and uh, we're going to select port 4500 and we're going to select to 4500 which means it's only one port and we're going to select the ip address where the port is going to be forwarded and here is the protocol is it tcp udp or both when unsure just select both and then save settings settings were saved successfully and that's it your application should be working and there we have it we have aoe which is forwarded to the computer with the ip address 192.168.1.101 furthermore you can check the status of your router to see if your router is in good shape now if you look at this we have the internet address and we have the subnet mask and then we have the default gateway and then we have the DNS servers which are querying internet searches on behalf of us for example if you type in microsoft.com the DNS query is sent to these IP addresses and then those DNS servers are querying the Microsoft.com domain and they find the IP address for that domain and they ship back the IP address to your computer to start receiving the information from the website. However, when you don't have internet or your internet is not performing well, one quick way to diagnose and troubleshoot is to click on DHCP release. We lost all the IP addresses and now we're going to do a DHCP renew and the router is going to authenticate again with the modem and is going to get the IP addresses and that might fix your problem these two commands DHCP release and DHCP renew function in the same way as IP config functions IP config release but these are working on our local IP address, not on our uh, router. So when you release the IP address, you get the four zeros and then you're going to renew it. Renew. And now it's renewing. If you can see here, it's getting a new IP address and we got a new IP address right there. The IP address, this is the IP address of your router, which is our default gateway right here. So your router is the default gateway for your computer, but your ISP, your internet service provider, is the gateway for your router. And you can see here in the router, 
that this is the IP address which becomes the default gateway for your router and then the default gateway for the ISP is this one right here so they kind of piggyback on each other port forwarding on a Netgear router so we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to port forwarding and we're gonna add a service and we're gonna select Age of Empires and we're gonna select the IP 192.168.1.102 and um, we're gonna add the port now we're gonna wait to get the confirmation to add a custom application or a custom port just click the add custom service we're gonna select the service name we're gonna say RDP we're gonna select either TCP UDP or both we're gonna select both we're gonna put the port 3389 3389 and the IP address of 102 apply and then we're gonna get the settings confirmed so there we have it it's age of empire and RDP RDP is a custom service and age of empire it's a pre selected or pre populated service from the manufacturer this is on port forwarding if you click on router status you're gonna find all this information about your router and as you can see the internet port the internet address is this one it's a DACP client and these are the DNS servers and uh, this is the IP address of the router itself which becomes the default gateway for our computer in the router status you can scroll down and go to the connection status and here we can release the IP address settings and then renew the IP address settings in case the modem or the ISP is not detecting the router properly this is a shorter technique than powering off and powering on all your devices